thank you everybody. Good day, good evening, good morning to wherever you're located uh, to, to this webinar. Uh, what my objective is to, is to give you a summary overview of what's happened, what is happening, and a little opinion of what may happen going forward regarding ISO standards uh, related to mining advanced uh, uh, automated systems. And also to motivate, if I can, ho however I can, uh, to people to get uh, engaged in what's, what's happening because the things are moving forward and the more mining stakeholder participation we have in this to represent mining, the better the standards will be for mining. So that's kind of my, my objective. Um, next, please, uh, Sandra. So as we know, just a little context, uh, the digital transformation has been underway for, for a while and it's really has been gaining momentum and activity and advancements in those uh, areas. The three, the three big topics usually that come around regarding the, the digital transformation of mining and the automation of mining is uh, related to autonomous mining, interoperability and data. Um, and data becomes kind of the lifeblood, the nervous system for all the achievements um, uh, what that advancements we're looking for the digital automation. Um, and this has been going on for a while. It's, it's not really not new. It goes back to the mid 90s and before that in the mineral processing side. But uh, those are the top three, but there's also um, a, a storm of uh, other things that people are, are looking to advance and get into, and especially things like the infrastructure um, uh, that's coming on. And the big one that's come on recently is the cybersecurity, which is having big impact uh, across the board as a, as a key infrastructural support technology to, of course, protect the uh, the automation and the systems that are in play at the mine. Next point, please, Sandra. And the other thing that's coming on strong is the integration, trying to make all these things work together in order as a total system to maximize the performance of the, uh, of the uh, operation. Um, there is a push by the international mining industry and GMG has been in the middle of this since the beginning. Um, if, and, and I use them as the example because there's a number of guidelines that have been developed over the years going back to 2015. Um, and all these guidelines uh, touch on reference, um, support, uh, the advancement and use of standards uh, to achieve uh, the best practices and guidelines. So. Um, if you want, uh, some of these are, are still excellent documents and very relevant to, uh, to supporting them, uh, identify the mining industry's need, uh, desire, and, and actually request for, for the standards to be in place. But it's not only ISO and GMG where this is happening. There's many other bodies. The race is on um, throughout globally uh, from through national mining associations such as GMG and and uh, S uh, SME and various other national mining associations, industry associations from the equipment side and the technology side, standards bodies, there's more than one. And to specifically note is the regulator. Um, in terms of standards, uh, the regulator tends to re desire and prioritize access and reference to the standards that are in place in developing their regulation. And, and certainly regulation can impact our, our mining industry quite a bit. So um, these tie together pretty well and come at our mining operators from various different directions. And there's a list uh, that I just started to, to put down that of what's, of, of who's participating, various organizations, and they're all working to standards to some degree or another. Next. So a little ISO education, I call it ISO 101. Uh, ISO itself is the um, International Organization for Standards. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's based on legal treaty between nations. 
and its, its status and regulatory uh, uh, role. Uh, there's 193 nations members, uh, covers 98% of the world GNI, which is uh, the gross national income, 90% of the population, with its headquarters located in Geneva, where the central secretariat is, and they have about 150 plus staff. There are 250 active technical committees that basically have 100,000 experts worldwide uh, participating in the development of the standard. And ISO is a little bit like, it's like similar to GMG in the sense that ISO does not develop the standards. It's the industry and the ISO nations that come to the ISO forum to actually do the development. ISO provides like GMG, sort of like the forum, the environment, the table and chairs, uh, the methodology by which standards internationally can be developed. But those are done by the industries uh, that are participating. Again, highly referenced in regulation and, and, and legal uh, references. And uh, one of the things is its benefits is jurisdictional har harmonization. So if you have a common standard that applies worldwide, every nation in ISO will should or will support that. Um, so rather than have 193 individual different uh, localized standards, uh, ISO plays the role of, of harmonizing all those together that the world decides upon in order to be applicable across the nations. And each country has its own national standard, its governmental national standards body that's that represents officially at ISO. And for Canada, it's the Standards Council of Canada. Uh, for the US, I think it's ANSI, the American National Standards Institute. And each country has their own such um, governmental council that, that represents them at the national level. So that's ISO 101. TC82 Mining, which is the technical, the umbrella technical committee for mining, of which SC8 is underneath, was founded in 55, went dormant in 95, and was reactivated in 2012. Um, and Germany is the chair and secretariat. So that is the umbrella master technical committee for mining. Its official scope is specialized surface mining machinery. Uh, drills um, such as that, mine structures, underground, uh, all underground machinery, mining machinery is under TC82, mineral reserves, and then the two subcommittees, uh, SC7, which is focused on mine closure and reclamation, and SC8, which is the advanced automated mining systems. And there are 23 active member nations and 14 observer nations. Next slide, please. Um, so SC8 um, is scope and focus is bat based around um, supporting the, the advanced automated mining systems for mining. Its purpose and what was originally established for and still is, was to provide the international mining community and mining nations with a formal global ISO standards organizational structure or unit or place with the focus and direction to address the automation and autom autonomous needs, priorities and developments for the global mining industry related to standards, but with active collaboration with all mining stakeholders. So prior to this, there really hadn't been a standards unit that was there to support the needs of mining and standards needs of mining in terms of, of automation. It was, there was a number of different things happening in other technical committees, and I'll highlight a bit of that. Uh, and it was a piece there, a piece over there, and there was really no home for mining, a, a, a place where mining can get together to address its priorities and needs, and that was the purpose of SCA. Uh, with its scope being the standardization in the field of advanced automated and autonomous processes, technologies, equipment, and systems in the mining sector and will address both surface and underground. Um, we originally got requested to put this together in 2015 
And over 2015 to 17, we uh, got it organized and initiated with approved formal approval by ISO in Geneva in February 2018. And myself uh, and Canada holds the chair and the secretariat, uh, which is the administrative management and structure to run SC8. Um, one of the emphasis, and this will come up a bit because of the uh, multi-ISO technical committee um, impact of, of automation and mining, but there's a very much a, a collaborative emphasis with TC-127. Um, and TC-127 is the Earth Moving Machinery Technical Committee, which is fundamentally the, the home of the OEMs for surface mining. When mining uh, went dormant, as I mentioned before, in 95, um, uh, the surface mining commu community took the surface mining equipment under their arm and wing to move forward, which is TC-127. And because there's such an impact and a role to play and part of the mining process is the equipment, which is under TC-127, there's really needs to be an emphasis on coordination, collaboration uh, with TC-127. And there's a general understanding that um, any standards that impact uh, this automation of mining, uh, whether in 82 or 127, will be a, what's known as a joint working group, where both TCs work together for the common benefit of, uh, of both parties. We had our first plenary in 2018 in Vancouver, 19 in Stockholm, and then with COVID and that, it uh, kind of put the plenaries on hold, but we recently completed our third one in 2022, uh, which was virtual. Okay, next please. So that's the scope of SC8. Um, uh, by the way, just to note that there is some note, some exclusions identified in SC8, which is the embedded onboard OEM uh, control and monitoring uh, automation for the running for their development and running of the equipment and mineral processing is metallurgical processing is also outside of SC8. SC8 fundamentally focuses on mining. I mentioned there was 14 participating members and three observing members and and this is who the list of who they are and uh, uh, we get good uh, participation representation from them next slide please so a little bit of the iso mining universe and i noticed i i noted that there were um iso how can i put this iso tends to be a little bit siloed in the sense that technical committees can be set up by industry or by subject topic. So there's great influences uh, on TC82 mining, as I mentioned, firstly, it, it, with TC127, uh, it's earth moving machinery, which is the OEMs, but we also uh, overlap quite a bit with a, with a a couple of other industry TCs, TC-195 for construction, for example, also uh, the TC for agriculture, and also the TC forestry comes in a little bit uh, on, on that as well. But, but construction and ag can be um, addressing some of the same issues that we have with mobile equipment and mining. Um, also TC-251, which is asset management, uh, because, again, because of the equipment being the, the maintenance component, the asset management side of things. And then we also have, uh, as when a standard is being developed that impact others, uh, you form what's known as a liaison and a joint working group. And this gives the TCs the right and full authority to participate in the development of that standard. So multiple requirements and the needs of others can that this will, the standard would impact can, can be addressed. There's also external liaisons and of which GMG was one, and I'll come back to that a little bit later on. But this universe of ISO does have um, many satellites that are, that are circling around each other and a little bit of coordinating the cats is required. Next slide, please. 
So a little bit of what's uh, been going on and what's happening in SC8. These, we have currently four standards under development, which are um, identified here. And these were part of the project of the plan, the development plan that came out of the initiation of um, uh, SC8 back in 2018 out of the Vancouver plenary. Uh, these were four were brought forward as the top industry uh, priority uh, for standards development at the time. And they've been underway um, since 2018, 2019. Uh, the first one is the emergency remote stop for mining equipment. This was brought forward by uh, some of the major mining companies uh, who had um, uh, the first autonomous fleets. And one of the things that they noted was that the remote emergency stop was unique or different from each vendor or solution. And ideally what they would like is the objective was to have <clears throat> one standard like a universal TV remote, uh, a universal emergency remote in order to stop equipment uh, so that uh, uh, personnel out in the mine um, wouldn't have multiple uh, emergency remote stops on them and trying to figure out which one they need to push in order to bring um, equipment to a halt due to a safety threat. Um, the uh, 23725 is the FMS interface. And this is a standard to establish an API, an interface between existing FMS and autonomous haulage. And the objective for the mining operator were there was not to have to necessarily replace their, their existing FMS system uh, if they brought in autonomous haulage that uh, the, the universal one could sit on top of it and interact with the autonomous haulage quite effectively. Uh, that is probably the most advanced standard that we have going to starting to uh, uh, distribute uh, the draft standard out to the international community for review. Uh, 3510 was um, a specification interoperability. Its title has changed um, in the sense that it's a communication interface between autonomous mining machines and the supervisor system. So uh, you notice that PWI uh, uh, three letter acronym there, that stands for preliminary, preliminary work item. And that basically is the, the need analysis, problem analysis, scopes activity to really define, to take this from a high level title and objective to a well-defined scope and purpose of the standard and and this one is in that still in that um uh realm of of determining its its uh, scope and purpose uh, to go forward on um its original one was the specification of interoperability which shown to be fairly large and they've narrowed that down to the interface between autonomous mining machine and the supervisor system which gives them a, a, a far more focused scope with which to work forward. Um, and the last one is the 3502, which is in PWI, which is was trying to get to a reference framework within a multiple of the, for example, in the GMG guidelines, I highlighted, highlighted back. One of the things that came out from the industry across the board and a fairly high priority was having a common reference by which the parties and the stakeholders who are delivering automation components could come to the same definition, uh, logical structure to be looking at an understanding of what are the common components, logical components uh, from an architectural perspective for automation and autonomy on the equipment by which then that would support the development of openness and uh, individual components that would have the APIs with which work together. Um, uh, and that ISO uh, standard was to approach that. They have again shown that there was a very large um, uh, scope on that and uh, a lot of a lot of breadth and unknownness. So 
Um, they've been working on refining a scope that, again, is understandable, attainable, and to benefit to the industry. And there's a couple of final proposals on the table. One is the logical architecture for drills, uh, for example, for automated um, production blast hole drills. So those four are still underway and progressing. And like I say, the 23725 um, is, is moving quite forward and for, is the most advanced that we've had. On these PWIs, it really helps to have face-to-face -face debates, discussions, meetings on them. And um, what's happened is over um, uh, with the COVID has is, is certainly interrupted that cycle of flow. Um, and it, for the last two years, there's been mainly virtual opportunities and not the face-to-face -face whiteboard type of uh, debate environments that you want. Next slide, please, Sandra. These ones, these three are, are led by TC-127 and the examples of ongoing development standards, which are joint working groups. And SC-8 has liaison, official liaison, I'm part of the joint working group. So it has all the, uh, all the rights and opportunities to participate, to bring the mining needs and requirements um, into these standards so that they are um, relevant for mining and not just relevant from another point of view. Uh, so the first one, 17757 is um, uh, an existing standard. In fact, it's in its second, its second edition has been um, um, distributed and has been used. The standard has been used, in fact, been in regular discussions with regulators and mining companies on how it could be applied and referenced. Uh, the lead is 127, and I say the TC82 is, is joint with that. Uh, where they are now looking at a third edition, and they're looking to extend it into smaller operations, smaller equipment. This was primarily focused at the time at the Ultraplast autonomous haulage systems, and um, I, I related to that, this is now looking to move it into smaller mine operations, smaller equipment, and potentially quarry type of situations. Uh, 21815 is collision avoidance and collision warning and avoidance. Um, again, there's five parts to that. The first three have been um, published, released to um, uh, outside the committee and new, part, new components are being developed, part four and part five related to track movement and swing rotation, especially related to shovels and any other forms of motion and collision stuff. This standard has been underway for a number of years, like I say, and it continues to expand as they deal with one piece and then move on to another. And uh, the last one I want to notice the 20, at the bottom is 23870, which is the earth moving machine, machinery. And this is a general standard for unboard, onboard mobile equipment, secure high-speed data communication. This is a, this is a very important compo infrastructure component of networking and uh, data access and various other things on the onboard mobile mining equipment. Um, it initially is the first stage scope of this is a replacement for J1939, which has been um, around for a long time, but it has its limitations in throughput, speed, functionality, that type of thing. The first step of this is primarily looking at the OEM side of the embedded onboard uh, ECMs and SMUs that are, that are there. Um, and the network is, is the fundamental place, but the problem, the issue and the thing that it's getting into is that, um, of course, that network needs to be uh, a part of the holistic network for the mind. And a hot topic in there is the cybersecurity, because the cybersecurity and the network can't be done in isolation just for the onboard uh, network control system. That is part of and a gateway for the data access, data needs uh, of the mine, of the owner operator of the machinery uh, for its use in the mine and that type of stuff. It's the base feed for predictive maintenance and a number, number of other 
onboard and offboard um, uh, capability. And also this would be impact by the, um, the third party technologies that uh, should be able to be open, plug and play independently, um, be able to uh, apply to the machinery. And I want to go back to Earth the collision avoidance because one very important achievement that they did was in the part two, where they uh, the standard uh, defines the interface between a collision, an independent collision detection or um, hazard collision warning to actually pass a command to the truck to stop. And this makes it now a, a total system of collision warning and avoidance because the avoidance part uh, has the interface by which um, the, the uh, collision warning and detection system can actually apply a braking method to the truck type of thing. So that's, that's a major accomplishment. And I think there was a job well done. And it starts to open up uh, the interfaces between third party technologies going on board and the embedded systems uh, that come from the OEM native state. Next, please. So the outlook uh, from the plan that we have and things that have been had added was accessible machine data, terrain data standard formats, traffic management standards, and pers potentially personal safety instrumentation of people in the mine. That came off the original uh, program back in 2018. What's been added since is coming on. And in our last plenary, and I'll read the resolution. We had a resolution for SC8 that um, it, SC8 to resolve to maintain an active watching brief on the development of, of the ISO onboard high-speed communication bus, the one that I mentioned just previously, as a potential enabler for drive-by wire uh, of mining equipment. So that has been officially put on our program. And that was... Um, uh, suggested by all the stakeholders uh, that participated in the plenary and have been in, uh, participating in SC8 going forward. Um, there's also been um, a, a request by the AEM uh, uh, Association of Equipment Manufacturers, again, which is a lot of the OEM side, uh, for a multi-industry common autonomy terminology and taxonomy for all off-road equipment. And one of the things, again, if you look through the GMG guidelines that it, it had brought this up, that there needed to be a common understanding and definition for a number of, of terms and valid things in, in the autonomy for mining and, and automation. And this was brought forward by the manufacturing side to do this. And this would include agricultural, because a lot of things on the off-road mobile equipment are used by not only mining, but again, as previously mentioned, the agriculture, construction, and various other ones. So they're trying, looking to build a dictionary of common references and definitions, which out of the, all the GMG work had suggested needs to be done too. So everyone's basically talking from the same sheet. And the other one is in uh, TCA2 is the definition of mining equipment. The current scope and, and definition within TCA2 is just is the underground equipment or specialized surface mining equipment, such as um, uh, continuous miners, uh, that type of thing. Um, and, and there's a there's a we're missing a whole pile of definitions because when the scope discussions happen with TC27 and we bring in mining equipment, it's just those things. But it really needs to address all the mining equipment, which is has not been defined in TC82. So that's what we're looking forward to and is on the plate going forward. Um, next slide. So the so the whole direction here and purpose has been to is regarding interoperability is the openness um, 
uh, of the architectures and the ability to plug and play and um, uh, things working together and trying uh, and moving from, which has been legacy type issues in other industries and computing and control systems, uh, the bundled proprietary stack of technology that you have to buy the whole thing and you have no opportunity to add change, um, provide better and also to, to um, spur and, and motivate uh, innovation and technology and component developments by other technologies companies that could be added um, and, and used independently in terms of, of the stack. So um, this interoperability and some of these standards are starting to uh, provide some of the insight in how you may break up that um, proprietary stack of, of controls um, architecture into its logical individual pieces. So um, you can see where this is starting to happen, just starting to happen um, for um, in this binding structure. So some of these ISO standards will fit into these pieces um, and will provide the ability for the end owner operator to use the best of breed approach for openness to add valuable things that they see into the into the performance and um, and look at that. So that's kind of the direction where this is going. Um, a ways to go, but it's the the most interesting thing is it's starting. So um, once it started, and this has been the the legacy approach in other industries and technology as well. So um, uh, we're starting to see that happen. So I think that is where things are moving to, and and support the openness, uh, the independence of components, the innovation by technology to add. And that collision avoidance, I'll go back to that, was a perfect execution example, actual standard that implemented that. Next slide, please. So where is this going? Uh, so the bundle proprietary, as I mentioned, uh, is beginning to unwind and evolve into the interoperable standard components. Autonomy continues improvement and maturing. And these approaches will uh, lead to um, a true autonomous truck and vehicle uh, in in our mining operations. Uh, standards are recognized as a required and critical component of the automated environment. Um, and the work at ISO is certainly one of the major, ISO is certainly one of the major global platforms to use to achieve this. Uh, the challenge is, is that these automation standards have become more functionally complex and multidimensional um, that we, we have to deal with. Uh, next slide, please. So standards are a requirement. I think our, our requirement, a system requirement for the evolution of our control and advanced automation systems. Um, what we need, where we're having execution problems right now is on the operator side is uh, the level of participation and engagement. Um, we don't have as many mine operators at the table uh, participating in the development of these standards as we should. Uh, trying to get, it's really important to get mining requirements in these into the, the joint working groups with the OEMs because that's how they, it's identified what the needs of mining in that are and that therefore the standard will take these into consideration and scope and move forward on them. We're, we're, we're struggling with getting a, a level of, of uh, mine operator participation, like I say, and also unity across the industry is important that mining brings a common set of requirements and, and gets those resolved um, in this. Uh, so, so that's one of our, that's probably our biggest challenge we have right now. And this is tough on the mine operators as well, because uh, the ISO standards are resource intensive. You really need the expertise at the table. International travel and, and costs are always an issue. But I think the biggest thing on the operator side 
is the manpower resources and expertise, which are quite limited in most mining organizations, if not existent at all, in order to provide those into these ISO in resource intensive developments. Um, also, the OEM and third party OTMs have been playing in ISO quite a long time and are very effective and know how to, how to participate. In fact, the OEMs tend to have a department or a group that's dedicated to this thing uh, because they use ISO quite effectively for development uh, in their development program and, and standards internationally. So those, they're very good at it, whereas we on the mine operator side are struggling to, our, with our presence and participation. The ISO structure, as I mentioned, is, is siloed. It's multi-industry and standards um, uh, organizations and issues and develop, they overlap, they're silos. Uh, you really got to be aware, participating, to be aware of what's happening in one side, because for example, the onboard na uh, network applies to m many industries that that network will be like j1939 is a piece of infrastructure that can be applied to to many different industries and trying to coordinate and get your needs and and demands in there to to be a part of the standard is certainly a challenge um and gmg is a key uh, has been uh, uh back in the original days it was decided and rightly so that gmg was not a standards organization it's guidelines best practices bring the industry together to collaborate on common issues and find ways forward but it was not a global organized a global standards organization but it would be the bridge from industry because gmg is probably the best collection gathering of mine operators and other stakeholder groups together um, that can, that work far faster and more flexible than the ISO process to come to common solutions. But that's, those results and feed documents should be used as input into ISO where um, st formal standards are required and needed and, and identified. So we need, uh, and, and in, inside GMG, uh, coordination with the working groups, which have been in discussion. Several of them have said that they we need to attain a coordination function with SC8 in order to keep that bridging going and, and working. Uh, and SC8, uh, we need GMG to get SC8 liaison status. And that actually allows GMG to fully and freely participate as an industry association, not as individual mining companies, which is sometimes easier on everybody in, in order to participate. The only thing GMG is they cannot vote on the on the end documents and see documents. The next slide, please. Uh, so again, the execution challenge. And from SC8, our next uh, we're working on our next five-year plan, uh, which has been. I got a shout out to Chris Dorn of Australia who's been working and leading that up. But our objectives are greater mine operator and industry engagement and alignment. We also need a, 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 a second funding campaign because as we push this out um, for travel and various other achievements to move SC8 forward. Uh, the priority for we, has been mine operations, health and safety, automation, interoperability, integration, and data, 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 data. Just couldn't. That is probably the most biggest asset that we should deal with. We got to move forward and get these existing standards done, uh, update our standards development program, look at where drive by wire may actually fit and drive greater collaboration within ISO across this multiple technical committee. Um, and all to increase and, and, and bring to ISO the recognition of increased competition and adoption of open interoperable uh, intelligent digital solutions, equipment, machinery uh, with standards development to enforce support that. Um, one bit of news, we're, there's a new chair coming in, Lake Danishman from uh, Canada. He's been an academic in 86 uh, in engineering and mining, uh, 
research and development on, on focus on uh, robotics and automation. And he also had a side career in consulting and innovation development was part and was part of Aquila, Aquila mining systems back in the mid nineties. Uh, and I worked with Lake there, Lake there in, in development of the autonomous of uh, drilling automation. Next slide. So that's our program for going, looking for the objectives for um, SC8. I'd like to acknowledge the support and participation we have had. We are a young, we are a young uh, subcommittee and um, uh, we're maturing, but uh, uh, being only five years in our next five year program. So compared to a lot of NICO, we're, we're quite uh, junior. Uh, but I'd like to recognize the funding support and the engagement support we've had of the top group of companies, Anglo, ArcelorMittal, BHP, Centera, Exxon, Finning, MindSense, Pectec, Tesico, Tech3DP, Rio, Tinto, Roy Hill, Suncor, Wenko, uh, who actually have supported us financially and funding in order to run and operate uh, SC8 for the next five years. And also the following companies for their actual physical engagement in the standards development of that group and the representation of uh, from the national standards bodies where a lot of the people come from is actually representing the Australia standards group or SCC or, or what, but those countries have also been um, uh, helpful and very supportive in their engagement with our SC8 work. Next slide. And that's it.